Hi everyone, this is Jonathan Shoemaker here again with G3 Boats and today I have a special interview for everybody. I am here with Lake Erie Program Administrator Travis J. Hartman. This gentleman knows more about Lake Erie and the fish in it than practically anybody. So I have a few questions we're going to ask him, just put out some general knowledge about fish populations and then maybe ask a few more specifics and you know get some get some knowledge out there for the general public so an easy softball question to start why don't you tell me about what you think the population numbers are estimated to be for walleye in Lake Erie currently last year's estimates based on the walleye task group that runs the population model said that we had around 32 million for the 2016 season and that was with a good 2014 year class, where this year for 2017 we'll be adding an even larger 2015 year class. So chances are the, the estimate will continue to go up and we'll be in a 30 or 40 million range this season and uh, we'll be in pretty good shape. And these, we have two good back-to-back -back hatches, we have some older classes like 2003 and 7 and 10, so it's a good mix of big young year classes and some existing old, older year classes that were big when they were young. And so you expect this to actually um, make the fishing good for the walleye over the next five to ten years? I think immediately this year what you're going to see is a lot of small fish. So we're going to have fish that are just over 15 inches that are going to be three-year-olds. We're going to have two-year-olds that are under 15 inches and we'll get there during the season. And then the next four to five years will be incredible as those two year classes age and grow. We're going to have some incredible fishing for 15 to 22 inch fish for years to come. Speaking of incredible fishing, are we going to see any incredible fishing regarding perch in Lake Erie anytime soon? With yellow perch we actually see some differences in year classes based on where you are in the lake. So we get different recruitment and reproduction in the west compared to the east. Right now in the Western Basin, we have four straight good year classes, and we saw the benefit of that last fall. We had our best Western Basin yellow perch fishing in the fall that we've had in a decade. It's only going to get better in the West as some of those younger year classes get bigger and, and get over eight inches. So right now in the Western Basin, we're looking at some pretty incredible years. The farther east you go, we have had some poor recruitment lately, some smaller year classes from uh, Cleveland and farther east. and. There are still big fish and catchable fish, but it's not the numbers that we got used to. We had some population highs uh, five or six years ago, and now we're down a little bit from that. So you don't have a general migration of all the perch in the western basin moving east with like the walleye per se? No, we, we model perch and walleye differently because from what we've seen, walleye do use the whole lake and, and even leave the system at times, so there's a lot of migration with walleye. We estimate a lake-wide population because the population functions lake-wide. Where with yellow perch, although we do see movement, it's much smaller movements and they tend to stay within basins. So we estimate each basin's population separately. And as I mentioned, now we're seeing some differences in recruitment from west to east, where west is having good recruitment and east is having poorer recruitment. And that's almost the reverse of what we saw the previous six or eight years where there were better year classes in the east than there, than there was in the west. And over the last couple of years there's been a lot of talk about algae and how it's affecting the fishing. I see um, it seems to be slowing down some of the recreational boating and jet skiing when it gets really bad out on the lake and people want to know does, does the algae affect the walleye populations or the fishing? The, the good news is we've yet to find a direct link between either recruitment or uh, fish growth or health relative to the algae bloom. You know, the algae blooms unsightly. It's when it's at its worst and there's high levels of toxin, it's undesirable. You don't want to touch it. You don't want to get it on your skin. It's an irritant. Obviously, we had the issue in Toledo with the uh, drinking water being affected by the algae bloom. But strictly from a fish sense, uh, we've done a fair amount of testing. The uh, sport fish like perch and walleye and bass don't seem to incorporate the toxins into their flesh, into their meat. So like our system, their livers process the, the toxins and it doesn't make it into their meat. So if you eat fish, uh, don't hesitate, you can continue to eat fish. It, it may affect their distribution. We're actually seeing that potentially walleye and perch might seek out the algae bloom because of uh, shade and uh, structure and the lack of structure in open water. 
but there's not a connection between fish health or fish edibility relative to the algae bloom. And lastly, the Ohio Division of Wildlife has been working for the last five, six years on a tele telemetry study regarding walleye. And lately, they've been expanding their, um, their ability to locate the walleye throughout the lake and the United States water. Could you explain some more about that? The telemetry project's really neat, and it is, it is a long-term project in the sense that we're putting acoustic tags that work on a sonar technology, somewhat like your uh, fish finder, but the, the tags that we put in the walleye send out an acoustic signal, and we have receivers all over the lake that they're stationary, they're anchored to the bottom, and when a fish swims within one to two kilometers of the receiver, if the fish has a tag in it, the receiver documents that location and date of that tag. So originally we had some individual lines of receivers that when a walleye left the western basin or entered the western basin we would know because they'd swim across this line. Recent seasons we've gone to more of a grid pattern so as we get years of these data piled on top of each other we have more specific information about how conditions impact walleye movement. So for example one of the early results we've seen we all kind of assume walleye migrate to the east, they spend time in the summer in the east, and they slowly migrate west. And while that general pattern is true, we're seeing as late as November fish moving back and forth between Cleveland and Ashtabula. So fish that started coming west, and then as late as November turned around and went back east. That's some great information right there. So that, to me, that, that tells us why Huron fishing can be incredible in October, and sometimes it's not good until December or January. I think the reality is the fish are better meteorologists than we are. When when winter's fast approaching, they're making their way back west and we catch them at Huron. When it's maybe November but winter's nowhere near yet, they're still pretty far east. And if they have the smelt and the temperatures they need east of Cleveland, they stay down there. That, folks, was some awesome information from Lake Erie Program Administrator Travis Hartman. Thank you very much, sir. Thanks, Jonathan. And I am Jonathan Shoemaker with G3 Boats. Thank you.